The agent platform wars are heating up as OpenAI has released a new set of agent building tools. We'll go back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Today, we have a story that could easily have been the main episode. I just thought the conversation around Dario Amade's predictions around AI coding was so interesting that I wanted to go a little bit deep on it. OpenAI has released a new suite of agentic tools, which absolutely are going to accelerate the agent platform wars. They released this with a huge new breakdown of everything that was included. The toolset includes their new Responses API, which they say combines the simplicity of the Chat Completions API with the tool use capabilities of the Assistance API for building agents, built-in tools including web search, file search, and computer use, a new Agents SDK to orchestrate single-agent and multi-agent workflows, and integrated observability tools to trace and inspect agent workflow execution. Now, sometimes with an announcement like this, the Twitter thread boys are useless because they're so caught up in their own desire to hype things up that they don't actually have anything substantive. But sometimes, especially when it's an extremely dense technical announcement, they can be very useful for breaking it down. So let's turn to Elvis here because he did a great summary of what was actually released. He writes, OpenAI has already launched two big agent solutions like Deep Research and Operator. The tools are now coming to the APIs for developers to build their own agents. The first built-in tool is called the Web Search Tool. This allows the models to access information from the internet for up-to-date and factual responses. It's the same tool that powers ChatGPT search, powered by a fine-tuned model under the hood. The second tool is called the File Search Tool. This is useful for agentic RAG-related use cases. It now supports metadata filtering and direct search endpoint, which enables direct search to your vector databases. The third tool is the Computer Use Tool. This is like the operator available via the APIs. It allows you to control the computer you operate. This comes with the computer use model that's used by Operator. Elvis continues, they also announced the Responses API. Unlike the traditional Chat Completions API, this new API is flexible enough to support multiple turns and tools more natively. Elvis continues, you can also pair tools together with the Responses API. It can call multiple tools at once and give you a final response in one request. The computer use tool can also be used with the Responses API. You can add instructions and customize the display. What about for those multi-agent systems? Well, Elvis continues, OpenAI has also made Swarm, their agent orchestration framework, more production ready. It has been rebranded to the Agents SDK. It uses the Responses API under the hood, but other vendors are also supported. The Agents SDK, which is open source, supports building multi agents out of the box. The triage agent can hand off tasks with the relevant context to execute tasks. It also supports monitoring and tracing out of the box, which can be used for debugging your agents. The tracing UI is also available to track traces of your agentic workflows. Big thanks to Elvis, who is himself an agent builder, for that more simple breakdown, at least. Basically, what's going on here is that OpenAI is asserting its place and its offering for developers in the white-hot agent building space. It's very clear that even though OpenAI is absolutely, I think, going to build some number of agents that they want to own themselves to keep close to the relationship with the customer, they also recognize that they're not going to be able to build everything, but they do want a piece of everything. Olivier Godman writes, there are some agents that we will be able to build ourselves, like deep research and operator. But the world is so complex, there are so many industries and use cases, and so we're super excited to provide those foundations, those building blocks for developers to build the best agents for their use cases and their needs. Trying to explain the relationship between the Responses API and the Agents SDK, project manager Nakunj Honda writes, the Responses API is like this atomic unit of using models and tools to do a particular thing. The Agents SDK is having multiple of those atomic units work together to solve even more complicated tasks. But what does this actually mean in practice? Simon Taylor writes, OpenAI's Responses API and Agents SDK is a huge moment for the AI platform wars. The goal is to make building workflow agents trivially easy. It can do things like connect to browsers, files, and apps, chain multiple agents together, and monitor performance in real time. Most startups spent the last year building what OpenAI just gave away for free. Here's what it replaces. Months of prompt engineering and iterating, complex orchestration logic, endless fine-tuning and testing, i.e. observability and evals, and ultimately this means that OpenAI is trying to be the all-in-one platform. Will it work? The bargain is, we'll make the tooling easy if you use our LLM, but you can't use Claude 3.7, which many like, yet for many developers this will be tempting. This isn't the end of the competition, it's the beginning. There's now two visions for the world, Claude's open model context protocol and OpenAI's tool use SDK and responses API. And I think he's absolutely right that this is a major, major moment in the agent platform wars, which will dictate the shape of a lot of things to come in the coming months. That was, in fact, not the only OpenAI news, however. One of the things that GPT 4.5 is clearly better at is writing. 
And yet, OpenAI seems to also have a new writing-focused agent, or at least a new model, in development. Yesterday, Sam Altman tweeted, We trained a new model that is good at creative writing. Not sure yet how and when it will get released. This is the first time I've been really struck by something written by AI. It got the vibe of metafiction so right. Now, for the sake of the headlines, I will not read the short story that Sam attached, but you can be assured that the fourth wall was decimated by this model's metafiction. Another rumor is percolating from a subtle mention in OpenAI's API changelog. The post referenced a model called O3 Mini Pro. When prompted to fix the typo, Adam GBT, who does go to market for OpenAI, commented, I don't see any typos. Although we don't have any official information, you can probably figure out what the model does based on the name. If it follows the same convention as O1 Pro, it will be a more capable version of the underlying model that uses significantly more inference. Still, speaking about the naming convention, Chubby commented, Please don't. Don't make an O3 Mini Pro next to O1 Pro and O3 Mini and O3 Mini High and O3 and O3 Pro. Please don't open AI. Lastly today, Meta has begun testing their in-house chips designed for AI training. According to Reuters, the first batch has arrived from TSMC, and Meta has set up a small cluster for testing. One source mentioned that the chip is a dedicated AI accelerator rather than a GPU, which could make it more power efficient. This is the first so-called tape-out for the chip, the process of finalizing the design and completing the first test run. It's very common for chips to go through multiple tape-outs to refine the design and fix issues before production is ready to ramp up. Each tape-out typically takes between three and six months. Meta has deployed custom AI chips before, but only for inference rather than training. Indeed, one effort to develop an inference chip in 2022 went pretty badly awry, leading Meta to scrap the project and pivoting to becoming NVIDIA's largest customer in an effort to catch up in the AI race. If this test is successful and Meta can ramp up production, it will be a big step towards reducing reliance on NVIDIA. But the timeline for that is still at least six months away, even if everything goes according to plan. Still, the infrastructure build-out continues apace. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief headlines. Next up, the main episode. 